not long ago, I was invited to the bat mitzvah of my cousin Alina, and it being a kind of conservative synagogue, the ceremony was unbelievably long. It was something like the length of a National Football League game, and I was bored out of my skull sitting there, and so I picked up the Bible, the Torah, in the pew back in front of me, and I opened it up just at random, and I came upon uh, this story in Genesis. It was Genesis chapter 34. And it was a story of Dinah, or Dina, I think she's called in the Jewish tradition. And it's about this daughter of Jacob named Dina. And one day she goes out by herself and she's raped by the son of a local chieftain. And this man who's named Shechem rapes her, but then immediately decides he's in love with her and speaks to her tenderly and decides he really wants to marry her. So he and his father go to Jacob and Jacob's 12 sons who are, you know, Joseph and Judah and Simeon and Levi, the, the men who would become the 12 tribes of Israel. And they say, you know, sorry about the rape, but Shechem loves Dina, he wants to marry her, and how can we make that happen? Can we, what if we share our land with you? Uh, you can marry our daughters and we'll be one people. You know, can Shechem marry Dina? Jacob doesn't actually respond, but the sons say, uh, okay, yeah, you can, you can marry her, you can marry Dina, but there's one condition, which is that you and all the men of your tribe first have to get circumcised. So Shechem and his father look at each other and they say, okay, we'll, we'll do that. And so Shechem and his father go back to their town. They, all, they get circumcised, all the men of their town get circumcised. And then the story just goes like totally macabre. And Jacob's sons show up at the town where all these men have just been circumcised and they're in pain, the Bible says, and kill all the men, take the women and children as slaves, steal the animals and sack the town. And then they go back to their father, Jacob, and Jacob says, well, you know, it's gonna make it really hard for us to live in this neighborhood if you guys are gonna be killing everybody. And the sons say, what, you want our sister to be treated like a whore? And that's where the story ends. And as I read this and I thought, this is not a story that I was taught back in Temple Sinai Hebrew School back in 1980. This is not a story I was taught when I went to you know, Episcopal Boys High School. And this isn't a story that's, that's hiding way back in, in the book of you know, Nehemiah or Zechariah, somewhere way in the parts of the Bible that no one ever reads. This is right in the middle of Genesis, the one book of the Bible that people who, even people who don't know the Bible, think they know. And I thought if this is, in the middle of Genesis, what else is there that I've missed? And it was at this point that I decided I really, I had to read the Bible, read the whole Bible for the first time and just see what was in it. And that was what uh, inspired the, the project that would become a good book. But I think that encountering the Bible in all of its um, rich, messy complexity makes it an entirely new and living sort of book, which is that when you see it without the, the neatly packaged moral lessons, it, it makes it more fun, it makes it more accessible. You realize like this is a book that's deeply funny, for example. It's a book where the characters aren't, the Bible heroes aren't simply paragons of moral behavior. They're deeply complicated people who act in ways that are both moral and immoral. And, the, and we learn a lot more from their com that complexity and that, the, the subtleties of their behaviors than we would learn from just being told, oh, Jacob is is the great forefather of Israel. Well, no, Jacob is the forefather of Israel, but he's also a con artist. He's also somebody who does deep wrong to his much sweeter, kinder brother. What I hope to convey in Good Book is a sense of this richness and, and complexity of the Bible that's, that isn't brought to us for those of us who, who just learn about it from the popular culture.